Imagine a playground where every kid speaks a different language, no one can trade snacks or play the same games. It would be total chaos. Quant says it built the translator so banks, fintechs, and blockchains can finally understand each other. I'm Shay. Three years, 100 plus videos, one mission, share what I learned. This is Deciphering Crypto, where we make blockchain, crypto, and AI simple. Here's the big idea in plain English, then we'll unpack it. Quant built Overledger. This is a universal API layer that sits above multiple blockchains and traditional systems. Developers and banks talk to one set of REST APIs. Overledger translates and orchestrates the details under the hood. For enterprises, that means bank grade key management and even paying gas in fiat via platform credits. So you don't have to hold volatile crypto just to deploy or operate. And just to clarify, APIs are just a way for software applications to talk to each other. Banks usually use REST or representational state transfer, clean URLs, and JSON. Blockchains often use RPC, which is remote procedure call, a different style. Overledger acts like a universal power adapter. You code once in REST and it handles each chain's quirk signing fees, and confirmations behind the scenes. Great, now that the adapter idea is clear, let's talk about the actual problem it's solving. Blockchains don't speak the same language. Data models, consensus, and security assumptions all differ. Wiring bank A to chain B and chain C becomes brittle, costly, and hard to audit. Quant's approach isn't to build another blockchain, it's to provide a vendor-managed interop layer with standard APIs and connectors that plug into the existing bank bank systems. Okay, so how does Overledger actually do this under the hood? Let's go step by step. Step one, keep the developer experience simple by using universal APIs. Your app calls Overledger, not each chain. Overledger translates your intent. It could be minted token, move value, query state into the right dialect for each network. Next, security and operations the way enterprises already work, which is step two. Orchestration and security. Banks keep their existing HSMs and KMS and identity stacks. What is this? Well, banks already have special key vaults, which is HSMs that lock up secret codes and a key manager, KMS, that decides who can use which code. They also have an ID and badges system for people and apps. Authorize plugs into those same locks and badges so nothing needs to be replaced. Overledger Authorize integrates with those existing systems to generate keys and sign transactions. So private keys stay governed governed under enterprise controls. Think of it as bank grade signing rails for blockchain workflows. And finally, step three is connectors. Overledger maintains chain connectors and routing, so multi-chain deployments don't require custom glue every time. And for operations, Overledger lets customers pay deployment gas via platform credits in fiat, removing the need to hold crypto solely for fees. All right, this is the fifth grade recap. Your app talks to one translator. The translator speaks all the chain languages and follows bank rules for keys and approvals. Now, what does that look like for real banking pilots. Let's ground this in real programs and proof of concepts. We can also start to get a picture of what this tech is looking like with banks. There are five case studies we can check out. First, Project Rosalind with BIS and Bank of England. Project Rosalind explored a retail CBDC with a two-tier model and an API layer to let the private sector build wallet and payment app safely. Overledger was used in the Ledger API simulations to test designs across multiple ledger types, illustrating Overledger's role as API plus orchestration above different ledgers. Second, the UK RLN experiments. In the UK, Regulated Liability Network, or RLN, experiments an industry pilot for a shared ledger of tokenized bank deposits and other regulated money. The platform ran on R3 Corda, a permissioned distributed ledger technology, or also a DLT, built for financial institutions. DLT is a tamper-resistant, shared database maintained by many participants rather than one central server. Quant Overledger plugged banks and card networks into that Corda network. We'll come back to the connector specifics, but you get the idea. Existing bank systems bridged into tokenized ledgers. The third study, SIA or Nexi testing on European payment rails. SIA chain integrated Overledger to test cross-platform apps and services across Europe's payment infrastructure, showing Overledger in 
banking rails context. Fourth, LAC Chain with Citi. LAC Chain, an inter-American development bank backed initiative that operates a public permissioned blockchain network for Latin America and the Caribbean, worked with Citi on a proof of concept where Citi's WorldLink APIs tokenized funds and moved value across the network. Quant is an LAC Chain partner, bringing overledger style interoperability into that ecosystem. And fifth, Oracle's Digital Assets Edition. Oracle launched its blockchain platform Digital Assets Edition, explicitly highlighting a partnership with Quant to drive cross-ledger interoperability and a unified ledger, use cases from financial institutions. All right, let's zoom out and score the approach. Here's what Quant's model gets right for enterprises. Enterprise first abstraction, standard APIs over multi-DLT cut complexity for banks. Bank grade key management, authorize integrates with existing security measures so teams don't reinvent their processes for blockchain. Operational practicality, fiat build platform credits reduce the need to hold volatile tokens purely for gas, real institutions and programs. Evidence across Bank of England, Roseland, UK RLN, SIA, Oracle DA edition and LAC chain collaborations. Now the trade-offs and open questions. Proprietary black box trade-off overledger is vendor managed. Some internals and live deployments aren't publicly auditable like open source stacks. This can be a philosophical or due diligence hurdle for some institutions. Token utility transparency. QNT's role in enterprise contracts can be opaque from public docs. Overledger's fiat billing for gas via credits can make direct token flows less clear to outside observers. There's also competitive pressure. Interop alternatives like Chainlink, Cosmos, IBC, Polkadot, XCM, Axelar, Layer Zero offer different security and op models. Buyers may choose Choose standards led or in house solutions. And then there's the adoptions pace. Enterprise cycles and regulatory change mean proof of concepts can take time to translate to production. Before we wrap it up, here's a quick tour of how this actually looks Rosalind layers, core CB ledger to API layer to private wallets, over ledger used in ledger API simulations. Then there's UK RLN, which is bank core to over ledger orchestration to core to tokenization platform. And then there's authorized which is enterprise native security measures to authorize, to sign, to overledger, to chains. And fiat credits, user interface choice, deploy with platform credits versus a wallet. Okay, back to the big picture. Quant's approach is very straightforward. Interoperability via APIs enterprises already understand, plus key management and ops that fit key bank controls. Strengths, clean abstraction, enterprise security, and credible pilots. Caveats, proprietary black box trade-offs, token utility clarity, and competitive alternatives. If those risks are addressed in live production, Overledger can be the adapter layer banks use to speak blockchain as a second language. I would love for you to be part of the conversation what interop designs do you trust most? API orchestrators like Quant or protocol native options like IBC or CCIP? Drop a comment. If this helped, like, subscribe, and check the description for all sources. Not financial advice. Always do your own research. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.